The church worldwide, the global recovery vessel reaching millions of vulnerable souls all over the entire world with the voice of Christianity, bringing the message of salvation, healing, teaching and deliverance to the brokenhearted, pointing all believers and non-believers to the resurrected Christ in his full immortal body, which is the church of the living God, the celestial city of the heavenly in Jerusalem. You are all welcome on board with us. Please join us now as Dr. Edmund brings a message of faith, hope, and deliverance. The Word of God. Do something in the promotion. Do something in the offices. Do something on the director. Do something on the manager. In Jesus' name. May the Lord break all the stony attacks with hammer. That problem that is like a rock that it cannot be destroyed, there is a destroyer. Yeah. Precious King of Heaven and earth, before whom I stand, I thank you for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for uh, keeping this whole people here all through last year. We've come into a new year. Most of them traveled. Look at them. They came safely. All the time you protect your people. May your name only be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. They move out in the night. Nights nowadays are very dangerous. They come back in the night. You, oh my God. And you keep them from evil. May your name be glorified. Amen. They move out in the day. The day is not even better. Things are happening. Day and night. But you are keeping your people. Amen. May your name be glorified. Amen. We rebuke the rainfall this year. It can never spoil things. We rebuke the sunshine this year. You can never spoil things. As Joshua hung the sun and the moon and they obeyed him, so shall moon and sun obey this voice. They will never cause damages. The devil can never use them. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, bless your people doubly the more. Touch their wives and husbands. Touch their children. Touch their brothers and sisters. Amen. Touch the entire families. Amen. Both home and abroad. Amen. Let there be touches. Amen. Let the mighty hand of God spread the good news of the holy trumpet. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Touch somebody where he is needed that touch. Amen. If it's in the a body maybe like in the liver in the womb in the navel in the uh, kidneys everywhere for a touch yeah. if it's in the eyes touch yeah. if it's in the blood touch yeah. let it be touch yeah. if it's in getting a job father open the door yeah. so that money will push into people's pockets yeah. in jesus mighty name yeah. If it's in daily bread, release abundant. Yeah. They will eat, eat, and remain. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Those that have no bank account, they will have bank account. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Those that have God blessing shall have additional blessing. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Rebuke the devil and his workers. Yeah. Slap them. Yeah. Push them to the pit. Cut off the part of their nose. Yeah. Cut off their ear. Yeah. Break their shoulder. Yeah. Damage their kneecap. Yeah. They can't chase your people. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Break their ankles. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. They cannot move against your people. Yeah. Break their backbones. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Lord, show yourself supreme. Yeah. Rebuke all the whole arrows coming from evil families. I judge those arrows and I scatter those arrows. I destroy those arrows. I break those arrows. I burn them with fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The arrows shall miss target in Jesus' mighty name. The arrows shall go to the pit of hell in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, help people. Let blessing follow somebody home today. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. make her a giant killer. Amen. Make him a lion killer. Amen. Let bears and lions bow down before you. 
because of the presence of God. Father, do something as you did in the days of Daniel. Do something as you brought that Joseph from the pit. Do something as you brought out Jeremiah from the pit. Do something as you saved your servant from the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. Father, do something for that brother. Father, do something for that sister. Father, do something for her husband. Father, do something for his wife. Father, do something for their children. Father, do something for the business. Father, do something for their compound. Do something for their residence. Do something in their businesses. Do something in their promotion. Do something in their offices. Do something on their director. Do something on their manager. Do something. Do something over obstacles. Do something over giants. Do something. Papa, do something. In Jesus' mighty name, show yourself, Lord, as the supreme God. Let your name be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed this prayer. Hallelujah. The Almighty God blessing you and blessing your seat as you sit upright. Uh, praise God because of what this day is all about. Thanks be to God. A new year has begun. And before you know it, we are already in the first quarter of the year. Meaning we are in the month of March. And incidentally, today being the 15th day, marks the half 50 percent of the month is gone before you know it under 50 percent is gone you are talking of april what can you do this uh, is god's standard it has not changed because god preset everything he commanded them and they obey he commanded the month the weeks the days, the hours, the moments, and the years to be seasons. The rainy season. But you see, one of the signs of the end is when you see that the seasons are getting confused. So that's one of the signs of the end. When rain starts falling, when it's not supposed to be falling, and then when sun is shining, when it's not supposed to be shining, and when many things are happening, when that you can't they, are no, they seem to be inaccurate but they are there they have to be happening but they're no more kind of uh, they seem confused or these are some of the signs natural disasters that happen here and there and uh, you know incidentally we are in such a society to be very sincere before the almighty god that uh, people are not open to the present civilization enough. The modern civilization seems to be, uh, you know, eluding us. We're not actually, very, you know, allowed. If you allow me, use uh, say so, as much as we should be allowed to know what is happening. And you don't, um, you don't have. You don't hear news. There's no news. You only hear stories. So to hear the news, only some people that have access to cable, uh, cable uh, satellites, and those that have access to internet, you read and see how the world is going. And uh, I do not know why the devil targeted this country. Every story about this country is not good. But we that are in this uh, society know that God has blessed it. We know very much that God has blessed this place. And we are happy 
but the devil is targeting this place without the knowledge of those who are supposed to know about it. And that's people like you. Have you spent time, any time, asking why has the devil targeted this nation or this country? And can I say also that why should you ask whereas you don't know why you should ask? That's the point now. Why should you ask whereas you don't know why you should ask? You see, every battle reaches this country first. In the whole Africa. And this is the largest settlement of the black complexion in the whole world. In the whole world, this is the largest black settlement. It's known for that in history, up until date. And now, the, the rampage, the, the sectarian rampage that is going to, that is triggering the third world war now, is triggering it. The third world war is already begun. But you do not know. You do not know. And I don't blame you. How can you know? Where you don't have the access. Look at the places we live. Just look at the houses around. So vulnerable. You know. Um, that's why I've been having that dream. I don't know when the dream will come true. To have so much money. And we're able to get a city church city and make it a city but i do not know but i will tell you something guess what you know i just got an information last week uh, that the lagos state government i do not know uh, where is that my witness there from aja are you there no <clears throat> i'm sorry it's not there so i located a very vast you know land to us uh, in badagri so I, i've been i've not been excited although they want us to pay some money but not as much as it should cost very large I, i've been cons considering that so i'm not yet excited i want to find out why i should be excited about that probably the Lord has a plan uh, which I don't know yet. You see. So I wish we have very large, vast of property where we can build the church city, the kingdom city. And then God's children will see heaven on earth before they go there. And I'm praying. I don't know when it will happen and how it can happen. We are suffering. Now, the people that are fighting in the north have already paid allegiance to the people, the caliph in, they call them ISIS. And so they have appointed these people here. They have recognized them officially. Go to your internet. If I say something to you, go to the internet, you see there. Most of the mobile phones, smartphones today to have a uh, internet on them go there you find out what i'm saying and uh, you know they have paid allegiance to them they have recognized it and appointed them to be their west african caliph a caliphate you don't know what we're talking about <laughs> how many how many countries now are fighting against those people i learned that ben had and uh, joined up is that correct I don't know. I just heard of that. But officially, Cameroon, Niger, Chad Republic, and Nigeria have not been able to defeat them. Four national armies have not been able to defeat them. What we are hearing is they bombed uh, Medugri, they bombed Br Brunu two days ago, yesterday. They bombed anywhere. How are they doing it? <clears throat> so, um, the devil is raise up people to help them to destroy the people of god all this are happening because the end has come jesus said the devil is doing everything in a hurry because you know that he has but a short time so the coming of the lord is at the door so if you have been letting like uh, you let means allow you allow things the bible says 
those that allow or let should be doing so until they're taken out of the way so beware uh, beloved brethren don't say the lord didn't tell you and that's why we have the gospel of the kingdom and again give yourself to the listen of the mysteries of the kingdom because if you don't know the mysteries of god you cannot fear god do you know that i have gone to god almighty once again in a very serious manner and i've come up uh, in a way that uh, the devil cannot understand do you know that this common word the fear of god we are talking about the lord had exposed it the lord says nobody can fear him without knowing him you must know whom you fear uh, you know jesus says this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent and it's impossible to fear what you don't know about you see to fear god you must understand the mysteries of god that's how it begins but when you read the bible flat like any other book you may never have fear of god that's why you see that people in the congregation of god are committing sin and wearing good dresses and covering up themselves you think they are children of god they will only tell you i'm christian but they know they are not clean they know their lives and i don't know when they are thinking to amend it and they cannot if you think you can amend your life you can never do that do you know why the episodes came the episode came because the episodes came because the the people that saint paul was sent to receive the message did not there's no way they can understand the message so if, if you look at it if you love counsel you keep on counseling them counseling them all the whole episode is full of counsel because they didn't receive the mystery. but the person who is counseling them received the mystery they say and in the counsel he puts on the message they say that's why that's how episode came because they are human beings god loves to bring into the mystery of eternal life jesus says unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them is not so you see anyone who loves jesus and come to jesus please he should not be cheated he should be allowed to receive the purpose why god sent him or called him to himself or called her to himself you see this is true so you need to live in mystery you just say anything is in the bible you just take it fire is fire uh, stone is stone excuse me how do you how does it sound to you that jesus is the chief corner stone you know why it's not surprising to you is simply because we have been using it every time many years you have been hearing of it so it's so common to you how can you call the lord a stone not you know stone <laughs> go to go out there you see stone stone is everywhere why not go and start worshiping one stone you see what i'm saying you see anything you see in the bible has its meaning so that's is is a, a, a metaphoric book the bible is metaphoric it's not just an ordinary book they say now according to the bible news you just had the, the, i want to have a brief information for you look at the last verse there and that is chapter 40 of isaiah verse 31 look at it in verse 31 uh -huh. wow what does it say it reads but they that wait upon the lord can somebody say that place shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles you know this is where we, we have read though it remains about uh, one more stanza to finish you see this thing we have read uh, uh, already how can you renew your strength no 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 no. you are waiting for somebody okay the renewer okay and they shall mount up wing as eagles uh, you know eagles 
eagles are the strongest flying animal on earth. That's why it soars and is very swift. Eagle flies the highest height in the sky. An eagle can see anything you on the ground cannot see. So that creature was so created by God to be like that. So he mounted up wings. So when I say it flies highest than any other thing, think about that. So if you mount up wings like that, not that eagle, not that eagle, that, not that one. Now listen, the Bible tells us that the Lord God is a son in uh, Psalm 84 verse 11. But you know the son, why don't you start worshipping the son if that's what you understand the Lord to be? You see, it, the Lord is the son that made the son. So, uh, that's what the, the Lord said. He carried Israel, Israelites in his eagle wings. So the Lord is our eagle. Not the, the natural one you're seeing. So when the Lord carries, excuse me, what type of wing do you think the angels have? When the Lord says, I've given my angels charge over you to carry you. The wings of the angels cannot be compared, you know, I mean, the, the other wing cannot rival with the wings of the angels. The ordinary eagle. Their wings are not as powerful, though they are too powerful, but not to be compared with the wings of the angels that the Lord has given charge over us to bear us on their hands. No, think about that. Now, those that wait upon the Lord, don't forget about that. Now, uh, we continue there. They shall, you know, they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint now listen you know why i read that place is because of the title of the message waiting upon the lord let's discuss it waiting upon your husband to return waiting upon your son to come back from school waiting upon your brother to return from his journey waiting upon somebody what do you get next when you are waiting? Waiting. You see, when you wait, you expect. Someone say expectation. That's what it is. Those that wait upon the Lord. You know the problem we're having now? Who is waiting upon the Lord? You see, if you are waiting upon the lord you won't be distracted to start doing another thing whereas you are waiting for the lord excuse me in some years ago some little children now who have grown up to become men they might have found that tract in the church it was written long ago about the year uh, 1981 or 80 80 80 80 the title was Portacot Airport. I had a friend. I knew him very well. We grew up together, but he was senior to me. His junior brother lost his life in the Civil War. So, incidentally, we met again. He was see the same shape he had before I recognized him. He also does. Because we were together. Look at the house opposite in Portacot then. So, we grew together. And he was so happy that day, he was going back to Port Harcourt. He was going back to Port Harcourt. So, and he was at the airport. Then he was drinking. He was also smoking. And I was talking to him. I, we, were, we were friends. But something happened. So I have to leave him to go to my own seat on the platform. I tell you, <laughs> this gentleman, all of a sudden, he carried his briefcase and began to race into the airport, chasing after the flight. The flight had, you know, whooshed, you know? The flight was going, the aircraft. He chased after the flight. 
They stop his thing, don't you? They were dragging. No, no, that's not the system. They tried to hold him. You know, he was chasing after the aeroplane, but the aeroplane would not stop. He missed the flight. He was drinking. He was doing other things. He missed his flight. What do I mean? He was not on the focus. So his expectation was, you know, messed up. He wanted to travel. He came to the airport. Just as we all want to travel to heaven. We always come to the Lord. But we come to the Lord partially. Think about this. You are here. Your mind is outside. This is distraction. He was distracted. He, he missed that. I never forget that. So I wrote a tract on that. When I returned. I wrote a tract on it. Port Harcourt Airport. Yes, and I gave the story in that tract. I don't know how we can lay hands on some of these old good tracts. Beautiful tracts. You see. So. The same thing with those that wait upon the Lord. Are you waiting upon the Lord? <laughs> Excuse me. Or are you just a worshiper of the Lord? Are you, are you a waiter? Excuse me. Do you know there are some places you go, they put your name in the waiting list. Do you know there's a place you go, probably want to travel, somehow you're on the queue. You are waiting. Waiting, you know, you know, uh, incorporates expectation. What's your expectation now? For coming to the Lord. What are you expecting? Those that wait. The Bible says that when Peter was waiting for the food to be okay after fasting, he fell into trance. He, he, was, about, he was hungry to eat, but no food ready yet. So, uh, he was waiting. Those that wait upon the Lord, it's like you waiting for anything. Like waiting for the train to come, waiting for the bus to come, waiting for anything to come. So anything you are waiting for, your eyes are on the focus. Sometimes you say, oh my God, what's going on now? What, why this child has not returned by this time? It's supposed to be at home by this time. Because you are expecting what you are waiting. Probably you have to be at home before you go. Those that wait, someone shout wait. Uh, you see, we don't understand this thing, you know. So that's the problem we're having today. That's why you see that people are distracted. That's why you hear somebody say, I backslid. That's why you see people dragging feet to follow the Lord. You see the way people come to fellowship. Sometimes I shake my head. Do you know that the Lord banks on time? The Lord works on time. Yes. Waiting upon the Lord. Now, <clears throat> To wait upon the Lord must be understood. It must be clearly understood. And not only that, you have to wait patiently if you're waiting for something. Why don't you just go to the office and collect your pay? You have to wait until the end, until the time for the payment, salary. You have to wait patiently. You see, Oh, my friend, are you still waiting? Yes, I'm still waiting. You see, your strength is renewed. Waiting renews strength. Especially when you're waiting objectively. You're, when you're waiting on purpose. This is the truth, you know. And not only that. When you wait on the Lord, you have to do that. He's, the, uh, uh, he's saying that uh, it's not only to fast and pray as uh, some people may be thinking just to, when you're fasting and praying you say you're waiting on the lord it's part of it now waiting upon the lord or uh, 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 entirely uh, means to well to exit the word of the lord to wait to wait rather on the word of the Lord, which says that Christ is coming again to take 
the church, his church, the elect. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying now. You have dressed up, you want to go to your village or town or somewhere, and you are at the bus station or motor park or something. Listen now. You have already left your house. You have already left friends. If you have children, you have already left them. If you have wife, husband, and brethren, you have already left them. You are at somewhere else because you are waiting for the vehicle to fill up before it takes off. Now, you are in the church. What does the church provide? The word of God, which says that Christ is coming again. Prepare to meet him. That is the essence of waiting. So we come to get the message of expectation. Someone say message of expectation. You see, we are waiting for somebody, please. We are waiting for Christ to come. And so the message of the church directs your mind and hope and the courage and confidence you know to wait upon the lord every encouragement given is for you to wait sometimes we have feast yes it's because uh, as you're waiting you have to refresh yourself we're waiting on the lord that is the meaning of the church that's why there is church the church is made to wait for the lord to arrive to come the church is made to prepare the way of the Lord. Like John the Baptist came and was preparing the people for the Lord Jesus who will come. And he said to them that one is coming after me whose shoes I'm not able to even lose or tie. He is before me. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So they were expecting that all along. That's the business of the church. So, this is a waiting room. Someone shout waiting room. Oh, you don't know that? You see, we give you the hope to wait. And when you go to your house, you know you have taken something. You have taken something to, you know, to keep on waiting. So, if you are out of the message of the waiting for the Lord, you will forget you are waiting for the Lord. Many have forgotten they are waiting for the Lord. That's why... They are distracted by distractions, by actions, by some, some unnecessary things that have nothing to do with the Lord. This is true. You see? No, think of it yourself. Go and analyze this. It's not, it's not a very big message that somebody will say, I didn't understand it. Just waiting. Go and you, you see that you will even know, understand more after what I'm saying now. And not only that, again, waiting upon the Lord, you know, means waiting for the Lord's return to the earth with all faithful expectation. Now, question now is, are you expecting? What are you expecting? Are you expecting and you're quarreling with somebody? You are, you are fighting with somebody? What's your expectation? Hey, when Jesus says somebody should slap you on one side of the chin, you should give him the other one. It's a very serious system of waiting. That's too much. That is to say that it's more important. That you're waiting for is more important than that slap. It's more important than that disgrace. So many take offenses because there is no root of the love of God in them. And many offend themselves, but they don't feel they don't feel it. Somebody has come to his house and said, oh what, oh, what time did I keep this thing here? But if it's someone else that kept it there, oh, it's terrible. Are you expecting? Tell me now. What, this is a very simple question. One that is expecting something, what does he do? A schoolboy that wants to become a dignitary in the future. 
what, 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 I mean, what, how does he comport himself? Does he study night and day? Because he's expected to have a good pass mark and a good rewarding, uh, 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 you know, academical qualification when he finishes the school, not just to go to school. And, you know, when you go to school, you see what people are doing. That's why they join occult. You send your child to the school before he returns. He's talking in that language. You see? No, think about what I'm saying now. Are you expecting? There are people that are doing something. They don't know why they are doing what they are doing. They say, what are you expecting? What are you expecting now? That's a good question now. Where are you expecting what you're expecting? Oh, some are waiting for Christ to return. Yet, outside the gospel of the kingdom outside the gospel of the kingdom outside his holiness outside his love waiting for his return or i don't know whether they are even waiting religiously just religiously where are you going many don't even know that the end has come that there is a lot of signs to show that the end has come violence is taking over in the street five ten people can begin to make noise and get other gang members they start with rampage begin to loot businesses loot going to break into the houses in the daytime such people what is that i brought they search him it was a motorcycle and they took thirty-five thousand dollars from him Say they are making political campaign. Is that a campaign? Uh, look at that. <laughs> you see, many things happening. Violence in the daytime. Have you heard before that during political campaign, uh, people have guns? They hand guns in the streets now. You can't count them. Guns all over the place. And it's falling into the hands of brutes that can use it for their own advantage at any time against normal people no think about that violence okay where are you waiting you are waiting on the how listen when i say what are you waiting how where are you expecting how also are you expecting you are going to the market you buy oil you put your hope in the oil. You put it in your house. He says it's anointing. And the person talking to you now, maybe one or two of you, maybe few of you, might have sensed that, you know, he's anointed. Is it from the market I got anointing? It's not. You go to the market, you buy certain things, you begin to use them for concoctions to invoke God. Is that how you're waiting? Where is the Bible? What are you doing with the Bible? You say you're waiting, you're expecting the Lord to come. Do you know what the Lord says about you? What does the Lord say about you? You say you're waiting. You're waiting upon the Lord. Who are you waiting for? What does he say? In his word about you, about your head, about your body about your tongue about everything your eating habit your listening hearing habits how you use your body that's why you see those who are christians many of them are fornicators even where they call church and they ask god forgiveness some are tired of asking for forgiveness because it's part of their lives You see what I'm saying? Where are you waiting? Oh, I, I am, I am, a, I don't want to mention names here. I am in this place. I'm in that place. You know, we, we use bell. We're all waiting. I'm not worshiping the devil, worshiping God. Is that what God says? Oh, I am in the church where we walk. We go to the wilderness, we walk, we tie. There are places you, you go, you find out this uh, so called. Um, a whiskey they tie with black red candle they tie people 
Is that her waiting for the Lord? Excuse me. You're waiting for the Lord and your heart is full of anger. You have not have your heart been regenerated. And you're waiting for the Lord. You're expecting. How are you expecting? Where? Where do you, who is feeding you? In which middle, spiritual middle are you feeding? That's the point now. How are you expecting? Do you follow the rules of waiting and expecting? What are the rules? Are you slow towards God? Are you fast? Are you hot towards God? Or you are slow? Don't you understand that being slow towards God is already a result about your life? Is already a result where you belong to? Of course, yes. Because I mean, the devil wish, wish, wishes you to be so slow towards God, not to be, not to hang on Him. Whether the Bible says, "Cast all your care on Him," because He cares for you. No, think about that. So this is what you must understand, and not only that, are you in the pattern of the kingdom? Are you in the pattern? Do you know what's called pattern? Pattern makes you appear very fine. Listen. If you see a child wearing Baba, Baba Dashmi coat or shirt, uh, it doesn't fit him. But if he goes to the tailor and is measured, pattern is measurement. Haven't you read the Bible where the Lord sent an angel? An angel, uh, you know, the, that's in Ezekiel. He was taken to a, a place and the water was just by his ankles. And the angel was measuring. Measuring. The water came up to the legs, came to the knees. The water began to grow. The water came to the waist. The water came to his belly, to the chest, and covered his neck. Measurement is pattern. Pattern is measurement. That is why even this world never knew that they never know. But they know in the flesh. But God who owns the pattern, who gave them knowledge, knows what he has done every vehicle it could be one name one particular name like a toyota which is very popular so your toyota has many models you cannot use just go to the market then you tell uh, uh give me uh, give me toyota part he will give you police will question him when you complain because he's supposed to ask you where is the model what model do you need what model are of, of this vehicle are you using? Every part of Toyota cannot repair to that Toyota because there is a pattern which has to do with model. That's why Christ came as the role model and laid down his footsteps for us to follow. This is the truth now. Look at that. Very simple. And now consider what I'm saying. It's, it's direct message, story. I mean, we are discussing together. That's it. Are you in the pattern? And what is the pattern, you may ask, of the kingdom? Oh, you say, but I'm coming to fellowship. I'm a member. Do you obey the word of God? Are you sure that as we are here right now, you obey the word of God? And what does God say? And what do you obey? I want to tell you that many of you here only look at the pastors. And hear what they say. That is the Bible. That is everything. The day the pastor will do a very good one, oh, you praise him, say this one is another God. The day you mess up, this one is a very big Satan. No, no, that's what I'm telling you. So people don't know exactly the pattern of the kingdom. What does God say to you? Are you obeying? And what are you obeying? Do you know why there is no obedience? in the congregation is because you are listening to pastor now as a pastor can tell you something you may not like it you may not receive it because that's not what you want to do you will do what you want to do but what does the word of god say do you obey that and you, are, you want to go to the kingdom of heaven listen the lord says only few shall be saved those that shall be saved are those who obey the voice of god the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. 
Obedience. Disobedience cast Eve and Adam out of the paradise. Forget about whether they are ignorant or not. Forget about that. They say. And again, what do you know as born again? Ask somebody now. He will tell her I was born again since uh, 2004. That is when he started coming to the fellowship. You give him money, God's money, to go and do work. He will not bring change. You put the rest into his pocket. Uh, many, many are doing that. And they're going to heaven. They rob God. They don't give God his tithes. They rob God. And they see God's work suffering. You see? Oh, and Jesus says, you know, lay your treasure in heaven. Where more does not rust, thief does not, uh, don't go into break. Which area are you obeying in what God says? What does God say and what are you doing? Wait on the Lord. Shall we rise on our heads, please? Please. Can we rise up? Can we rise up? That is more important. To rise up means more, is more important. At this juncture. We are going to pray. Waiting on the Lord. Are you waiting on the Lord? Pray in Jesus' name. How are you waiting? Okay. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Are you waiting on the Lord? <laughs> How are you waiting? Where are you waiting? Oh, I'm waiting in my denomination. We are all the same. Is that correct? Is that correct? Are you sanctified? Are you sanctified? Are you sanctified? In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let's sing together. Sanctify me, O Lord, Master Jesus. Master Jesus, sanctify me, O Lord. I am ready to obey. King of glory, sanctify, sanctify me, O Lord. Master Jesus. King of glory, you are going to pray for sanctification. You know, the Lord moves around in the camp of his people. You know the Lord is a God of sanctification. Holiness never comes without sanctification. Separation. You know it's time for you to separate yourself from worldliness. Separate yourself. You see, we, now we all look like, a, like angels. What of when we go to our places? How do we demonstrate our lives? You need sanctification sanctification will definitely prove to the people that you are a child of god even those who don't fear god who don't know about god they will just know it 
that this person is a child of God. Prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Sanctification. Lady Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify your people. Lord, sanctify your people. Lord, sanctify your people. Lord, sanctify your people. It is the Lord that will do it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> now the Lord just ministered to me that how can he sanctify you when you are so strong? I didn't understand that. The spirit of the Lord is saying that most of you are so strong. But how can I sanctify such a strong person? Let me tell you what came into my spirit. Let us pray for submission. Let God give you the heart to submit. Because if you don't submit yourself, how can you be cleansed by the cleanser? So you need to be, you need to be submissive. Tell the Lord to help you that for this day. Because he has given man power to submit himself. Then he will start working on that person. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, you are still very strong in the flesh when you have not submitted to the Lord. Oh yes. Prayer. You want the Lord to sanctify you then submission takes place. Submission takes place. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed together. Yeah. All right, can you stretch forth your hands now and pray over them? And now you open your palms too. Open your palms. Open those your hands. Open those your hands. Open the open your hands because you were supposed to come out. You delayed. Hmm? You delay. You delay. But uh, I don't know about. I'm afraid of you now. Why you delay? So, but get your blessing anyway. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Call them unto yourself. Call them unto you. Know why? So Jesus, they are come. Lord, be with them. Lord, solve their needs. Solve their problems. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Church, you can sit down. God bless you. Let me pray for them. Father God Almighty, before whom I stand, I pray over these people who are standing before you because you know them, you know whom they are. You know why they must be prayed for. You know why they must be blessed. I pray uh, this woman I'm getting a ministration that something is pursuing after you. You are running. Something is pursuing after you. Uh, I don't know what is pursuing after you, madam. I don't know what you are running from. I don't know. So, I don't know what that is, madam. I don't know. You should know better. You know all of you are coming up there to see me. Okay. So, Father, I pray for them. One after the other. In Jesus' mighty name, that the power of the Lord will take after them, take control, guide and direct them, and let them get saved. Let them be loose from the chains of the devil. 
um, wherever way they are bound, may they be loose and they focus on Christ and not go to hell. We rebuke the spirit of hell in control of any of them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, this is my prayer for them. Because they ask for it, hence they come out. Ah! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.